Hey there, Nate here with the Volunteer Tech Vlog on the Live Sound 101 YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the basics of setting levels for live sound. You know what I mean? Levels. Moving those faders, yeah? Alright, let's drive. These vlog videos are delivered in a let's drive format. I get all set up, I hit record, and then I go. And I chat about doing something like setting levels. So this is something that if you're doing live sound, it's one of those things that you just do all the time. After you've done it for a while, you kind of do it on um, autopilot. You don't even really think about it. And so when you think about explaining it to somebody else, you gotta kind of go back and say, okay, what am I really doing here? Uh, reassess the situation. Am I, am I even doing it right? Did I maybe develop some bad habits over the years? What am I actually trying to do? So first, let's start off with, um, you know, you're assuming you got your connections all made, you've done your XLR patches, you've got a direct box if you need a direct box, you've got a microphone hooked up if you need a microphone, if it's a microphone that requires uh, phantom power, you've got your phantom power switch turned on. Remember, dynamic microphones do not need phantom power, like a Shure SM58 or an SM57. Those are dynamic mics, moving coil microphones, no power needed, but if you've got like, hmm, I don't know, a condenser microphone, for example, uh, you may need phantom power for that microphone to work. So assuming you've got all that stuff set up and you've got good levels, uh, well, in order to get good levels, the next thing you gotta do, assuming your tech is good to go, very next thing, is you've got to get a good performance out of your, your talent. Uh, and that talent could be a guitar player. It could be um, it could be a singer. It could be any number of things. It could be somebody speaking up at a podium. Um, you've got to get a good performance out of that person. And what I mean by that is you need performance intensity sound check happening in order to set good levels. So you you don't want somebody who talks like I'm talking right now. Uh, I'm talking pretty loudly. Uh, in, in the car to try to get over the road noise. I, I do that on purpose because I know there's gonna be road noise, but if I talk loudly, now that's, you know, there's less road noise to, to, that you hear on the YouTube video. So anyway, uh, a little side note there. Um, but if, if I were to be doing a sound check right now, and this is my performance intensity, this is how I'm gonna be doing things uh, during a performance, and I go up to sound check and I'm like, Hey guys, Nate here, the Volunteer Tech Vlog, on Live Sound 101 YouTube channel. So if, if, if I'm not at the right level, the performance intensity that is gonna be consistent during the performance, um, it's impossible for the, the, the live sound person to, to set levels properly if, if the talent is not on the same page. So <clears throat> as a live sound person, this goes back to communication with, with the talent being a, over communicating being a very good communicator is a huge hugely important skill um, so you don't sound like a you know a grumpy sound guy with a ponytail because that's the stereotype right and for good reason because it's a <laughs> it's a difficult job but um that's number one you want to get you want to get good solid levels at the source right so let's say you've done that check that box let's for example let's say you've got a guitar player up there and he's got his his guitar rig he's got his pedals dialed in he's got the levels all set on his on his uh, you know pedal board or what have you and uh, he's got his his level set to you know eight or nine or something like that or maybe he's got him cranked up all the way on his actual guitar you want to make sure he's got he's he's cranking he's putting out good good volume whatever it happens to be whatever his preference but just make sure it's dialed in where it's going to be for the performance so let's say you've got that all happening and you're getting levels what do you do next on the soundboard or the virtual mixer we, we've been we moved away from a physical board a few years back we're uh we're, we're some of those weird folks here where we do uh sound at the church here uh, where we use software audio console so whether it's a physical board or it's a virtual board, the, the principle is the same. So first thing you wanna do, uh, most physical boards have this button, it's called a PFL, pre-fader, or P, PFS, pre-fader level, or pre-fader solo. 
you want to go to a specific channel that that guitar is plugged into and you want to hit that solo button and you want to meter just that channel nothing else you want to do you don't want to mix uh, you don't want to meter anything um, uh, that's already being summed and combined you want to just meter that that one channel single that channel out isolate it and what I mean by meter is you want to get a visual indicator uh, electronically of where that level is coming into the board so the meters can be a v, VU meter you might have a peak program meter uh, might be an uh, LED illuminated meter with green lights turning to amber and maybe at the very top of that meter they're red that's what I mean by meter uh, so you want to you want to look at the levels coming in you want to see the measurement electronically of that signal and now you're going to reach for the trim knob and uh, the trim knob should be at zero to start with no I misspoke the trim knob should not be at zero it should be at negative infinity to start with there's a difference and it is important and you now the, the guitar player, I'm imagining this scenario right here, the guitar player's in the room jamming out to his favorite you know, song or, or whatever. He's, he's putting out that good solid content, that, that, the good levels that you need. And you're gonna slowly begin to turn up the trim knob as your eyeballs are watching the meter. And in an analog console, you wanna get that meter. It's gonna be bouncing around because it's, it's never gonna, it's not like you're, you're, you're dealing with sine waves here that are 100% consistent that never happens in reality so what you have is this, this meter that kind of bounces up and down and the levels are shooting all over the place but what you want to do is average it um, just get in the right ballpark around 0 DB on that meter uh, in an analog board um, but who am I kidding who uses analog boards anymore in 2016 right unless you're unless you, you really know what you're doing you got some vintage gear and your, uh, your band, you're working with Dave Grohl or something like that, and he's, he's asking for uh, to, to record everything to 24 track, uh, you know, two inch tape or something like that. But anyway, that's probably not the scenario. You've probably got uh, an X32, let's be honest. Uh, and um, uh, what you want to do is uh, in a digital board, there's a little bit, it's a little bit of a different um, approach. You don't want to go zero dB, you want to go like negative 14, negative 12 somewhere around there to give you give yourself a little bit of headroom now there's reasons why you might want to go higher or lower than that it just depends on your situation but negative 14 negative 12 is a good safe spot to turn the trim knob up and remember that's what you're monitoring because when you hit the pre fader solo button now you're metering what's coming in right at that trim knob right at that preamp right at that first initial gain stage um, you're you're metering what's what the electronic signal coming into the board and once you get that set you pretty much leave it you know what I mean you're not you're not gonna be when you're mixing a show you're not gonna be hopefully you're not gonna be touching the gain knobs you're gonna be using the fader so you want to get the electronic signal coming into the board good and solid and then you want to close that door move on to the next thing and then when you're mixing you want to mix at the fader uh, so that's that's kind of like the the bare bone basics of uh, of setting levels and uh, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else so if, if, if like you've never done live sound before that's kind of like a very basic thing if I forgot something please let me know I know a lot of smart people are out there on YouTube and uh, when I'm driving you know, sometimes I might forget something, but I think it's a good way to do kind of like a brain dump and just get get stuff out there because the reality is we've got a vo all volunteer tech team. I've been a volunteer for a long time. I also am a systems integrator and I do uh, commercial integration for my full time job. So I, I have a good understanding of a lot of the technology. Uh, but uh, but but from a live sound sound standpoint, I I, I used to be a stagehand uh, back in like 2005, 2006. I haven't done any of that work in a long time. But um, but I still am a volunteer live sound person, and I like to train other people. And um, it's uh, sometimes it's tough to get one-on-one -on -one time training people. So I figured, why don't I make these videos uh, on you know put them out there on YouTube, and I can use them to train people uh, in my community. And if people you know outside my community, out in the world wide web, want to learn something or hear my perspective of live sound, they can do that. 
And uh, one, of, one of the things I've set up on this channel, Live Sound 101, is uh, playlists. And from the very beginning, I was very strategic about setting up playlists. I don't know if people are using them the way I was hoping to, so I'm going to share a little bit about how the playlists are set up and how you can use them right here. So I've got a whole bunch of these playlists set up. I wrote them down on a little piece of junk mail I got this morning, so I don't forget. But um, So the Volunteer Tech Vlog, newest to oldest, that has all the videos, all the vlog videos newest to oldest and then I've got another video that's the exact opposite that's volunteer tech vlog oldest to newest if you want to watch them in all in chronological order you can do that and that's just something because I know different people use YouTube different ways it's just a convenience thing if you watch them backwards or forwards it's just an easy thing to, to watch them. So that's all the videos all the vlog all these type of like let's drive vlog videos are there and a few others that aren't driving um, but then I've got audio lessons like this video about the basics of live of of of, um, of setting levels for live sound is an audio. I would call it an audio lesson, like a little mini audio lesson. And um, I've got all the audio lessons with a different thumbnail. It's blue at the bottom, and uh, that's if somebody just wants to hear the audio lessons, they can click open that playlist and just watch all the audio lessons. And I've got another one called Media Reports. So after, so I just arrived at the church this morning. I'm gonna go in, do my thing. Um, and afterwards, so I'm gonna be keeping notes about what happens during the service because I wanna get better at what I do. I wanna document what I do. The good, the bad, and the ugly. I wanna be transparent. And um, I'll take that, that running list of notes from during the service and I'll take that list in the car and I'll read it off here. And that'll be my media report and I'll talk about kind of what happened. I'll do a little debriefing type of a deal. Um, just to, to it's it's good to get in the habit of keeping keeping records and kind of like a little media diary, if you will, to remember things as they happen. And then I've got a couple other playlists: feedback, uh, live sound 101 uh, playlist, which was actually <laughs> which was the playlist that kind of sparked this whole thing back on the Big Nate 84 YouTube channel. Uh, I did this live sound 101 playlist, and I I made these these eight live sound 101 videos and then I took that and spun it off and now I'm making it into a whole YouTube channel and I'll get back into making you know those type of videos more in the future uh, and I've got a couple of things like video lessons and stuff like that so those are the playlists um, check them out if you find this content helpful you might find some good stuff over there um, the other th what else what else am I gonna talk about here so I'm at like 12 minutes now um, I've arrived and um, one of the things I just started doing is recording in 720p. So I started realizing there's not really, if I'm doing vlog videos driving, there's not really a huge advantage to, um, you know, doing 1080, 1920 by 1080p. It seems like it just takes up a lot of extra storage. Uh, I've been experimenting with long form videos. There's, uh, there's two YouTubers out there that I keep a pretty close eye on that do like these really long form videos where they just hit record and they just blah 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 they just they just go and they've actually been very successful and uh, it's got me thinking maybe I should start experimenting with some long form comment that's you know content that's more than you know just like a 10 or a 12 minute video like some like some of these guys out there I won't mention their names yet but uh, you, you might know them some of them make like an hour two hour video where they're, they're, it's just them sitting in a chair talking in their backyard or walking around just talking and uh, it's just uh, it's interesting how YouTube is changing and what types of videos are, are becoming successful and why they are and um, so uh, I'm, as, a, as a student of, of media and, and new forms of, of content creation um, that's very interesting to me because I, I, I like to do podcasting vlogging YouTube videos uh, I just I the whole like social media stuff like i'm just fascinated like how people communicate these days and so i just want to have experience doing all these different things and kind of understanding it like how does vine work like what makes what makes a really good vine um so but that's kind of like a side note uh, so anyway this video will be 720p save on memory uh and uh oh yeah really good a really good um uh video editing app i just got downloaded last night so when I upgraded my phone to Android, I use a Samsung Galaxy S5. When I upgraded my phone to Marshmallow, um, a lot of unforeseen things happened. So I upgraded to Marshmallow, 
and my video editing app, like the stock app that just like came with the phone, didn't work anymore. It, it wouldn't open. So, and I don't do a whole lot of video editing on my phone, but I do the, I do these videos on my phone, obviously. And um, usually I record them and upload them to YouTube. But sometimes they would there'd be like a cutoff limit. And like they'd only go for five minutes or would only go for 10 minutes and then I'd stitch two videos together um, and so I lost that basic just splicing editing jump cutting stuff some every once in a while I do a couple little edits but nothing nothing like major not like a final cut type of a deal and um, so and a great app. This is this is the point. I wanted to let you guys know about an awesome app called Power Director. Totally worth the the five bucks or the six bucks they charge. But uh, sometimes it can be hard to find a good video editing app uh, for a mobile device. I I tried um, uh, what is it? Viva Video something or other because it was like one of the highest rated and like most popular ones. I'm like, oh, I'll try that. And you couldn't even control the output resolution. And I paid for it. I paid like the three dollars or whatever. And I'm like, okay, this is the popular one. I downloaded it, made a video, and it it shrunk everything down to like 800 by 400. I'm like, what? What is going on here? Why is this scaling it down? And there's no way, even with the pro version, to tell it's a video editing app, and you can't set the resolution, the output resolution. So that drove me a little bit nuts. I returned the app, filed a complaint. You know, gave <laughs> I gave it a bad review and uh, returned it. But I guess that app is for, you know, everybody else in the world who doesn't care about the real technical stuff of video, which I guess makes sense because most people in this world aren't like, you know, thinking like that, like like I do or like we do, students of audio and video technology would. But uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's like the little, the news there. Um, things I'm working on, just testing out long form content. I don't know if I'll go that road, but I think it's just an interesting idea. I think you have to have a real talent for being a windbag and uh, uh, maybe, maybe I have it, maybe I don't. I don't know. But uh, I think that's about everything I wanted to touch on in this video. Uh, I better, uh, it's 7.45, I better, better jump on in there and uh, we're using the backup system again today because we haven't had time to uh, switch everything over to uh, to the, the main system, the primary system. So we're going to be doing another throwback Sunday using the old analog board, which uh, I do like faders. Like I did, I did realize that I really do miss having faders to, to actually physically put my fingers on. Um, so I do like that, but uh, man, the functionality of a virtual board that you can access remotely and just the, the flexibility I love the flexibility of like a, a digital software based system so we're in this weird transition period um, you know what I really want I want an analog board that's controlled digitally like an API the API vision that was only three hundred thousand dollars <laughs> all right so anyway you got more than you bargained for if you came to watch this video just to learn about the basics of live sound. But I do uh, two videos per week all about live sound and technology and fun stuff like that on this channel. So go ahead and subscribe if you, uh, if you like this channel. And if you got questions, I got that feedback playlist. Uh, I need some more videos for that feedback playlist. So you got questions, you write in, you send me a comment, send me an email or whatever. Uh, you can reach me, Nate, at livesound101.com. Send me, drop me a line. Let me know if you like me, if you don't like me, how I could get better, what you're learning about. Don't be a stranger. All right, I'll talk to you in the next video. Thanks for watching.